Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, today we have finished up our work on a lot of Punnett squares. I know we've done a lot of them. We've done a lot of practice with them. I think that's great. What we get to look at now are genetic disorders and pedigree. So we're going to look at what are some ways, what are some traits that we can inherit that cause problems inside of the body? What are some genetic disorders that we can inherit? In addition to that, we're also going to look at pedigrees. And pedigrees show how a trait has been passed on over many generations. So that helps us determine what types of traits these genetic disorders are and how they get passed on from one generation to the next or even skip generations. All right? So hopefully today you'll be able to explain how genetic disorders are inherited. You'll be able to analyze a pedigree for specific genetic traits and to predict the chances of inheriting a genetic disorder. So we'll look at that and we will uh, go from there. All right, any questions? Let's go. Any allele can carry genetic diseases and disorders. So uh, alleles in your body may or may not carry certain genetic disorders. Some are dominant traits and some are recessive traits. And individuals that are heterozygous are considered carriers. So one dominant, one recessive, you're considered a carrier of that particular trait. And these alleles uh, can be deadly. They can cause deformities in the body. Um, and they may not cause that many that much problem at all. It all depends on what allele it is and what changes have been made to it in order to make it a genetic disorder. If you look at the individual on the right, this person has six fingers instead of five. This is called polydactyly. Polydactyly is a genetic disorder where you develop extra digits, such as fingers or toes, things like that. So it's really not a really not a life-changing uh, genetic disorder, but it is one that is abnormal and does not occur very frequently in the population. All right. So some examples of genetic disorders: we have cystic fibrosis, which is a very common genetic disorder. It is recessive and causes uh, mucus to be really, really thick. It makes it very hard to expel that mucus, so the mucus gets clogged in the lungs and causes a lot of respiratory problems. Albinism is recessive as well, and this results in the absence of pigment in skin and hair. And This can cause some significant problems a little bit later on. A lot of genetic disorders cause other problems as well that aren't necessarily related to the disorder. Some genetic disorders result in a shortened lifespan, like cystic fibrosis. Huntington's disease is actually a dominant disorder that affects the nervous system. You see the one on the right is a normal brain, and the one on the left is an individual who's been afflicted with Huntington's disease. So you can see how uh, Huntington's disease can significantly affect brain function and cause a lot of problems that um, could will lead to early death in the individual with Huntington's disease. What's nice about this is that we can actually um, detect a lot of genetic disorders. We can detect whether you have a chance of having an offspring that has a particular genetic disorder. So it's quite fascinating that we're actually able to go through and predict how, uh, if your offspring will or will not have a particular genetic disorder or have the chance to have a genetic disorder. Okay, so we can do a lot, uh, use a lot of the biotechnology that we've talked about in order to prevent genetic disorders from happening and predicting whether they will or will not happen in offspring. One way we can look at this, one way we can detect genetic disorders is by what's called karyotyping. And karyotype is just a picture of homologous chromosomes that are arranged by size and type. So you see here on the right, this is a partial karyotype of a human. And that we should have 23 pairs of chromosomes. One through five here are missing, but they're not missing in the individual. They're just not in this picture. We should have 23 pairs, and we can detect certain genetic disorders this way by looking at the chromosomes and making sure that they match up. Here, we notice that there is an abnormality. There is a third 21st chromosome. That extra 21st chromosome is uh, a label for Down syndrome. So this particular individual will be afflicted with Down syndrome. We can see that by looking at the karyotype. And this can be done through what's called, um, you can just take it out of your cells for a, a, a fetus. We can do what's called an amniocentesis, where we take amniotic fluid out of the mother's womb. And we utilize that fluid and are able to make a karyotype out of the fetus's genes.
And as a result, we're able to see if they may or may not have a particular type of genetic disorder. All right? One way we can look and see how traits are passed on is through what's called a pedigree. And a pedigree is a diagram that shows inheritance of a trait over several generations. <coughs> there are several key things we need to make sure we know when we look at a pedigree, like the one on the right. Um, a horizontal line between individuals indicates mating, and a vertical line uh, in offspring, is, or the offspring in order from left to right. So we see that we have two individuals at the top here, and they end up having one, two, three, four, five children, and the ones that's uh, in order from left to right. So the square on the left is first, then the half-filled circle, then the square, then the half-filled circle, and then the square. So that shows... Uh, parents and offspring, and we can see mating that occurring, individuals that get married and have children. Circles are female, squares are males. If you're colored incompletely, you express the genetic disorder. If you're colored, uh, if you're empty, you are normal. You have no, uh, you're not a uh, carrier, you're, you're not a carrier, you don't express the trait, you are normal. And then half filled in simply means that you're a carrier for that particular genetic disorder. Here, we have an X-linked recessive trait. So you notice in the X-linked recessive trait that most of the females here um, are carriers. And then individuals that express the trait are near, almost per, all male. There's only one female that expresses this trait. So that kind of tips you off as to what type of genetic disorder this is. If it affects mostly men, it's more than likely a sex-linked trait. Remember, we talked about that in our last unit. If it affects both men and women equally, then more than likely it is an autosomal disorder as opposed to a sex-linked disorder. So let's look at that here in just a minute. There are two ways we need to analyze them. We need to analyze traits on dominant versus recessive, and we need to analyze analyze, and we need to analyze traits based upon whether they are autosomal or sex-linked. So first, let's look at dominant versus recessive. Dominant disorders are typically going to appear in nearly every single generation. Uh, very, and can have unaffected offspring if both parents are affected. Unaffected parents will always have unaffected offspring every single time. So if we look at this, uh, we see at the bottom here that affected parents will typically have affected offspring, but don't necessarily always have to. Remember, it is a dominant disorder. So if it's dominant, that trait is probably going to be passed on. If you're unaffected, you will not pass that disorder on. Okay? So the best way to see this, uh, recessive may skip a generation. It can be found with often with two unaffected parents. If we look at these two pedigrees, we can determine which ones are dominant and recessive by using these tools and these tips on the left here. Recessive may skip a generation and can be found with offspring with two unaffected parents. So if we look at the top one here, we have two unaffected parents here. But they have individuals that have the trait. That tells you that this is a recessive disorder. If you have unaffected parents that have the trait, or that have children that have the trait, the trait must be recessive. Now, dominant disorders will typically appear in every generation and can have unaffected offspring if both parents are affected. So here we see we have both parents that are affected and we have an individual who is unaffected. That tells you that this trait must be dominant. Okay, so those are the best two ways to look at this. It's recessive if we have two parents that are unaffected that have an affected child, and it's dominant if we have two affected parents that have an unaffected child. Okay, so that's how we look at dominant versus recessive. Additionally, recessive traits seem to appear less frequently than dominant traits. So if you look here and look at the percentages, the recessive traits appear less frequently than the dominant traits do on the bottom. Autosomal versus X-linked is much easier to determine because autosomal will affect all genders equally or about. There may be a slight difference either way, but X-linked will almost always affect males. Um, you'll see many more males affected with this than females. So if we look at the chart here, we see we've got one male, two, three, four, five, six. Six of the individuals that are affected are male, and only one is female. That tells you that this must be an X-linked disorder.
all right? Because most of the men, most of the individuals who are affected are men, all right? And very few, if any, are women. If they're affected equally, the trait is probably autosomally inherited. So, let's analyze this pedigree and determine what type of inheritance pattern is present. <coughs> First off, let's look for the autosomal versus recessive. And the best way to look at this, remember, we said if we have two parents that are affected, have offspring that are unaffected, then it must be a dominant disorder. So we know that this is a dominant trait. Now we need to determine whether this is autosomal or X-linked, but I can already tell you right away that most traits, if they are dominant, 99.9% .9 of them, at least any of them that I will give you, if they are dominant, they are also autosomal. I will never give you a dominant sex link trait because they don't appear very frequently. There are only two or three traits that are actually dominant and sex linked. All right. So if it's dominant, it's going to be autosomal every single time. All right. But if you need to do more work, you need to go through and analyze a couple of these uh, parents to determine whether their offspring could potentially have the disorder or not based upon the information that's given. So hopefully you're able to go through and analyze and explain how genetic disorders are inherited analyze pedigrees for specific genetic traits, and predict the chances of inheriting a genetic disorder. So we'll go through some more pedigrees as practice a little bit later on, and uh, make sure you take your video quiz to let me know how well you understood it. All right, we'll talk to you later, guys. Have a great day.